As the Prime Minister is finishing up his meetings at the ASEAN summit and is getting ready for the G20, questions keep arising about Canada's relations with China. And earlier in the day, he, along with Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister, Melanie Jolie, were asked what worries them most about China and President Xi Jinping. Here is part of Pre Minister Jolie's answer. One thing that was highlighted is how much China is trying to influence international norms in its favor, which really departs from our own interests and values. And so that's my main concern as foreign minister, because it creates more instability in the world, and it's a threat to uh, peace and security in general. Now, these comments come just as Canada has been hinting at a tougher stand against China. So for more on this, we're joined once again by Charles Burton. He's a senior fellow at the Macdonald Laurier Institute and a former Canadian diplomat to China, joining us from Ottawa. Mr. Burton, always good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. Let's begin with what we just heard from Minister Jolie about this concern about China's increasing influence, that it's bad in terms of democratic values, but it's just generally bad for security in the region as well. What did you make of what she had to say? Well, I think the government is gradually coming around to the idea that we cannot continue to make compromises to China on non-economic areas so that we can um, achieve more access to the Chinese market and create Canadian prosperity through trade and investment. And I mean, it, it's more than, than they're saying so far. I mean, after all, the House of Commons came up with a unanimous uh, resolution that China is engaged in genocide. There have been very dangerous military activities in the Taiwan Strait. Um, you know, it just uh, the China's interference in our election, these uh, revelations have come out, uh, which could have affected the actual result of the election. And um, any number of areas, economic coercion, uh, hostage diplomacy of Kovrig and Saver, which suggests that it's more than, as the minister put it, increasingly disruptive. China is an actively destructive force attempting to, to destroy the international rules-based order and establish itself as a global hegemon. Whether they can succeed in that venture or not, you know, remains to be seen. But it's clear that the United States and uh, our other allies want Canada to step up much more in terms of um, recognizing what's going on and contributing to the measures to try and uh, bring China better into compliance with the accepted norms of diplomacy and trade and hopefully stop the genocide. Well. On the issue of potential interference in our elections, so this was reporting that I saw initially with Global News saying that there seemed to be credible evidence from multiple sources that China was trying to interfere and push the election results or at least certain candidates one way or the other. Now the Prime Minister was asked about that today and he said that they had put together a committee to make sure there was no interference or that the outcomes of the election were not affected by this alleged interference. But he did say we have to be on guard about this. So how big of a threat is this that, and how exactly would China be trying to interfere with our elections? Well, I think at the time of the election, there was a concerted campaign of disinformation against uh, certain um, uh, candidates, particularly candidates of uh, ethnic Chinese origin in our democracy, who were urging that that we have um, a, f a Foreign Interference Transparency Scheme Act, in other words, an act that would require that people in the policy process, people of influence in our China policy process who are recipients of benefits from a foreign power, in other words, from China, should have to declare that publicly. Uh, you know, certainly this leaked CSIS report that Sam Cooper of Global uh, News came up with suggests that China was actively involved in 11 uh, campaigns illegally providing funds and that China not only has placed people into the um, into the electoral campaign offices, but that China has placed people in the offices of members of parliament. Well, obviously, you know, what we'd like to see would be who those 11 um, candidates were, 
uh, if they illegally received money knowingly from a foreign source, that they should be made accountable in law. And if CSIS has identified people inside our democratic system who are not working for, for Canada, but are working for a foreign power, that that should be attended to as well. So, you know, what we want is more than just rhetoric and words, but we'd like to see action and, you know, some arrests made if, in fact, um, illegal activity has occurred as appears to be extremely likely. That is troubling. And on that front, you know, we've heard from the Prime Minister on this issue today. We've heard at least a couple of times this week from Minister Melanie Jolie. But we've also heard from the leader of the Conservative Party, Pierre Polyev, who was talking about this issue earlier in the week and said, quote, that Trudeau has failed to protect our democracy in respect to Chinese interference. Is that just playing politics, sir? Or what do you make of those comments and criticisms? Well, we know that Mr. Trudeau received the CSIS report uh, 10 months ago, so why has there been no action since? I guess that is a valid um, political partisan concern. But this matter will be, be coming before the uh, House of Commons Procedure and House Affairs Committee, and a full investigation uh, will be made by that committee, and we'll get our, um, you know, we'll try and get to the bottom of it and find out exactly what's going on and what we can do to prevent this happening in the next election. If there's no accountability for those who have actively influenced our electoral process, then presumably they will try to do it even more next time. And so, you know, we really need to put some resources into this and there has to be some political will to make those who have um, made serious errors in terms of, of uh, collaboration with a foreign power accountable for this and and ensure that in future people who might want to take Chinese money to further their electoral prospects will think twice about it. Before I let you go, Mr. Burton, the last time you and I spoke, the issue of for lack of a better word, Chinese police stations that were operating here in Canada, you you and I discussed that. You addressed that there were three of them. Subsequently, we've learned that the RCMP is investigating this. Um, but it's been very difficult to get clear information about what exactly is going on and who is being targeted by these police officers. What exactly are they here to do? And I wonder if, again, I could ask you to put a finer point on this. What is our federal government doing about these alleged police stations here? Well, we have no evidence that the government has done anything. Um, presumably, CSIS has informed the authorities of what's going on. Uh, there, these stations exist in many other countries, and other nations have been much more proactive in uh, closing them down and bringing those uh, accountable for them. What I'd like to see would be anybody who is working as an agent for a foreign regime involved in harassing and menacing people here in Canada should be uh, brought up before the law, and the Chinese diplomat in the embassy and consulates uh, throughout Canada who are responsible for this kind of thuggish activity should be declared persona non grata and sent back to, to Beijing. You know, we just, we just can no longer tolerate this kind of behavior by the Chinese regime, thinking if we, if we just uh, turn a blind eye to it, that China will uh, not retaliate against us economically uh, on other matters. You know, it's, it's about a lot more than the Canadian bottom line in trade with China, we really have to put much more emphasis on protecting our democracy, sovereignty and security. And I'm hoping that that's the direction the government is now moving. Okay. We'll wait and see. Charles Burton, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you.